Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. In today's video, we're going to solely focus on what's going on with the SEC and their overstepping and overregulation by enforcement within our space. When it comes to this whole KuCoin and the NYAG stating, you know, Ethereum being a security, that's just going to tie into, uh, you know, Chairman Gensler and the SEC's plan and this whole political narrative that they're trying to shift in regards of, um, you know, obviously trying to get the incumbents and, you know, Wall Street and their buddies, you know, a bigger slice of the pie. They're kind of doing this whole kind of like backdoor, hey, you take care of Ethereum so we don't have to type thing. And it's going to be exposed here in this video that Digital Perspectives have put up. And it's an, an amazing video. I can't believe that. We have this information we're going to cover. It's about six minutes long, but we're going to start right here because this is what it stems from. NYAG sues KuCoin for selling security. So we covered this on this channel already. And if you come down here, it says, quote, this action is one of the first times a regulator is claiming that in court, ETH, one of the largest cryptocurrency available, is a security. So this is a big thing, right? Uh, remember, the SEC is attacking Ripple and XRP as we speak. It's been over two years that they've been under um, this lawsuit. And keep in mind, uh, Ripple, the company, has been meeting with the SEC years prior to that lawsuit actually dropping in December 2020. So they ended up dropping the hammer on them with the lawsuit as Jay Clayton was leaving office. And that was prior to uh, Chairman Gensler going into office. So uh, we have a quick update here from Jeremy Hogan. It says, look, uh, look for Ripple to file a Voyager uh, filed a Voyager judge's bankruptcy decision in support of the fair notice offense. It's good to see judge put into words a problem that crypto projects face. So then he puts this uh, this screenshot here. Uh, coming down here, there's a few things that I wanted to cover. So just quickly touching on this, uh, Jeremy Hogan had um, put up a, a prediction as to when we were going to get the uh, the judge's ruling on uh, su uh, su uh, summary judgment. And he says March 15th, but Apparently, uh, he's going based off of what the other attorney says, and he's saying March 30th. So it's just kind of a waiting game to kind of see, you know, what uh, Judge Torres has decided within within litigation. Remember, if you've been following this, you know how important and crucial the Ripple versus SEC case is. Okay, we need Ripple to win, and this is going to tie directly into what's going on with this whole Ethereum being classified as a security in regards of the NYAG, because they're literally trying to get this through. So they can have some litig some litigation and precedent in regards of moving forward in their case against Ripple. They're trying to get this through saying, oh, ETH, ETH, ETH uh, has the um, security status, which gives them a little bit more power and leverage when it comes to moving forward. So put it like this. If Ripple wins this case, right, and when it comes to secondary market sales of, of uh, the token XRP, the digital asset XRP, right, that's going to set precedent for the rest of the industry. But then if, if the uh, SEC and NYAG can get their... Uh, narrative of, you know, classifying Ethereum as a security and move forward with that, that's just going to give them a little bit more leverage. And we're going to cover th some more of that here in the next couple of clips, but I just wanted to throw that out there. So we have some updates in the Ripple versus SC stuff. Uh, John Deaton had to put this up. Uh, this Bitcoin archive says, Kathy Wood says, Bitcoin didn't skip a beat while the U.S. banks were collapsing. It says, a perfect bull, uh, bull storm would be BTC or Bitcoin rocketing off. While it does, Judge Torres hands the SEC the biggest, uh, it's big fat loss. I think the crypto market deserves such a storm. And that's literally what we've been talking about. It almost seems like we're, there is no coincidence and it seems like things are kind of just falling into place. So uh, like we always say in the show, it's just going to be a way in the game to kind of see what happens. We can speculate as much as we possibly can, but no one really knows except for the people that are actually, you know, in the know. Uh, moving on here, this ties into what's going on with this East stuff. So he put up these screenshots here, right? And he had circled. Uh, ETH holders can now profit merely by participating, right, in the staking. ETH is promoted as an investment. And they come down here, the block says, quote, the investing public is investing, anticipating a return, anticipating something uh, something on those on these tokens, whether they are proof of stake tokens, uh, where they uh, also looking to get returns on those proof of stake tokens, getting 2%, 4%, 18% returns. And that's Chairman Gensler. So clearly trying to do everything in their power to classify ETH as a security, right? The shady part is the SEC in 2018, remember the Ethereum free pass, the Ethereum free pass speech at the uh, Yahoo conference, uh, the Yahoo finance conference, excuse me. They gave them the free pass. They gave Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? So they were saying, it, it, you know, it's a commodity. They don't classify it as a security. But now you have Chairman Gensler and NYAG in their whole narrative that they're trying to they're trying to push, saying ETH is a security. Obviously, they move ETH moved from proof of work to proof of stake, which complicated things, but how do you give them a commodity status 
now you're trying to say it's a security. So you see how that it's almost like a different a different situation, but the same situation in regards of Ripple and XRP. You know, we're working with you trying to be compliant as Ripple the company, and now and then you drop a lawsuit on us in 2020. See the shady, shady behavior there. Uh, John Deaton says, read the tweet and info below. Now read what NYAG says about staking in ETH. If you don't believe the NYAG and Garrigan's are coordinating, I'm at a loss. Really put, really put that into perspective right now, because when we watch this video, it's going to blow your mind. And if you haven't seen it, I'm excited for you to see it. If you have seen it, we're going to show it again. If you don't believe NYAG and Chairman Gensler are coordinating, I'm at a loss. I totally agree. Let's, uh, let's listen into this. Which is this thing in new york could be on a very fast track yeah what what happened there is very very suspicious so they uh used one of their investigators is, is it all right if i, I talk about that, that absolutely case? absolutely but what happened was the new york ag tapped one of their internal investigators who works in that office and they were told go open an account on kucoin um and see if a New York resident can open an account trade because that would be violative of New York law. Sure, because you, you have to have a bit license to engage with New York residents. So I don't know how he managed to do it. He, the investigator, but he did. And so he opened an account on KuCoin, uh, which I think is headquartered in the Se Seychelles Island. Um, here's, the, here's the interesting part, Brad. There are 700 tokens listed on the KuCoin exchange. This investigator was told to buy Ethereum mm. and as well as the Doquan Terra Luna, yeah. but Ethereum. Wonder why that was. There's 700 of these. He was told, go buy Ethereum, buy it, sell it. So you can say, I've traded it. I'm a New York resident. And then we'll file a lawsuit. And then here's the here's the other tricky part, uh, Brad, is KuCoin did not respond to a subpoena issued prior to the case being filed. And my guess, it's a total guess, I haven't seen anything from KuCoin about this case. Uh, not on their Twitter account. I, I haven't seen it. Uh, they didn't respond to the... Um, subpoena. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the New York Attorney General strongly suspects that KuCoin's not going to defend the case at all, right. and that they can go, they, the uh, AG, can go to a court in New York and say, we want an injunction, you know, giving us everything that we've asked for, and a declaration that ETH, Ethereum is a security. And that can happen quite fast way, way before there's any trial in Ripple. And I believe there's a possibility. I have no evidence. This isn't a rumor. This is James Murphy's speculation that the SEC was embarrassed with what was happening in the San Diego federal court case where they had to say, we haven't decided. Or else, Fred uh, Rispoli has been a legitimate case it's going to go forward mm -hmm. if the sec security uh so they were stuck and had to say we haven't made up our mind therefore let's dismiss this case meanwhile at about this same time the ag starts this investigation tells the investigator go buy ethereum so that we'll have a premise uh for a lawsuit against the defendant who may not even show up to defend and we can get a declaration that it is a security. Well, this makes John Deaton's effort in signing up Ethereum holders extremely important because he could be the only one there uh, if he intervenes uh, on behalf of, uh, last I heard he said he had a thousand, you know, who had signed up. There may not be any KuCoin and it, and it might just be John Deaton which, you know, I see this stuff happening and I think to myself, does John Deaton literally have to do everything, you know, for this crypto community? I mean, yeah. Thank God he's a Marine Marine through and through and will take on any fight. I don't know how he has the time, but, uh, you know, kudos to him. I'm going to do personally everything I can to 
support him. But I'll tell you what, that New York AG case is extremely suspicious. Well, uh, I appreciate you shedding light on it. And it does feel suspicious. And when you talk about the I or think about the idea of Ethereum, you know, everyone's saying it's decentralized, it's decentralized, regardless of understanding that JP Morgan's got a huge hand in this in the backside of it. Um, who shows up? Like to your point, outside of John Deaton, I mean, is it consensus? Is it Joe Lubin? Like, who is actually going to show up? Is it people from the Ethereum Foundation that are going to show up? Because if they do, now they're representing it, and that even makes more to the point that it's actually a security because you're there. So it's well, Brad, that's a fantastic point. Uh, certainly occurred to me. You would think that Vitalik and Lubin and the Foundation understand what's going on. I mean, their entire lives will be changed oh. if the United States, if New York says it's a security. Yeah. Um, so you would think their inclination would be to run into court immediately and to stop it and intervene in the case. But you make a great point. Uh, you, you really are thinking things through like a lawyer. There's this risk of appearances of, see, it is centralized. These are the guys who run the show. You know, it's a security. They're promoting, you know, whatever. Uh, it's a two-edged sword and a tough decision. But ultimately, I cannot see how you don't take some action when the implications are, are huge for them and for every single project built on the Ethereum network. And and that's one of the biggest problems, right? We're not we're talking about trading of ETH on the secondary market, right? And think about the projects that are built on the platform as well. Think about how many thousands and thousands of investors are, you know, investing in in, in putting a lot of their capital into those projects as well. Not even talking about Ethereum, but just the projects that are built on ETH. So it's not just ETH and the ETH Foundation. It's the thousands and thousands of investors and uh, people that are putting their capital in there that are their livelihood is going to be affected. This gentleman right here says at the end, you know, the entire ETH, ETH foundation uh, community, the, the, the founders, all the people that are behind this, like their lives are at, their lives can be forever changed if ETH has a security status. Right. So he's like, what are the optics? If they do, if they do have to go in, which they technically have to do, God, I mean, thank God that they have John Deaton because if KuCoin doesn't step up, JD doesn't step up with the class action lawsuit, who's going to step up? They would have no choice. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, we're just, it's going to be a waiting game to kind of see what happens. You know, are they going to come into court and, and fight the good fight? You know, what's, what's the double-edged sword that he's talking about? You know, when they come in, are they going to be like, well, okay, yeah. You know, these are all the guys that were behind, you know, the whole ETH gay scandal and trying to get the free pass and, you know, slamming the door in the rest of the industry. There's so many gives and takes there. But at the end of the day, they got to protect ETH, right? There's too many. There's thousands of projects that are built on ETH. There's thousands and thousands of investors that are investing into those projects. I mean, we're talking about complete market chaos if that happens. But that's what Chairman Gensler and his buddies and the incumbents, they want. They want that chaos because what's going to happen? It's going to bring and suppress. It's going to bring the prices down. It's going to suppress the prices so they can continue to accumulate and get a bigger piece of that pie. And that's what we're talking about in this community. It's more than just one individual project. It's about the entire industry. And why do you think, J.D., out of, I mean, out of all the scrutiny, all the hate that, you know, the XRP and Ripple community have received, even him himself? But he's right, right there, day one, as they NYAG dropped that uh, lawsuit against KuCoin going after ETH, right there, he's starting a class action lawsuit. What does that tell you about the XRP community? It's about the entire industry. And that's what JD's representing. And like I said, thank God we have him there. I wanted to uh, point out, he said, uh, when he said the NYAG, because um, I, I think it was, uh, he was saying KuCoin didn't respond to like the subpoena or something. I forgot what the word was, some legal term. He was saying that NYAG saw that as an opportunity. It's like, oh, man, you know, they're not going to fight. We can just, you know, come in, show up and do whatever legal thing they got to do to get some declaration saying ETH is a security. So they pretty much was like, hey, let's go ahead and handle this real quick. Let's take care of this real quick, because before this thing with Ripple versus SC goes any further, we can go ahead and get this quick little declaration with ETH. And what does that do? It goes back into what I said at the beginning of the video. It's going to cause complete market turmoil. ETH and all the projects built on ETH, it's going to be chaos, right? Thousands and thousands of lives are going to be affected just like they did when they dropped the lawsuit on Ripple and the XRP community. 
it's it's tragic and it's sad and it's shameful that the representatives that's supposed to be out there, you know, at, fighting for our best interest are literally cohort or coordinating with other, we'll say, evil actors within the space to fit their own narrative. They don't care about us. And it's been it's been quite evident. So with that being said, I had put this up and I pinned it. Make sure you go to uh, JD's uh, little thing here, uh, his tweet here, and you join the Ethereum, not a security class action lawsuit. Okay, get get you know get involved. We we went from I think initially it jumped up to like three thousand in the XRP community, and we we're now over seventy five thousand. Okay, and if you hodl ETH, I'm sure a lot of a lot of you out there you know purchase uh, Bitcoin or ETH or whatever cases that may be your initial. You huddle it, so right. You 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 utilize it in some sort of way, or maybe you invest into a um, Ethereum project or a project that's built on Ethereum. You know, you got You got to do what you can. He, I think he was saying something along the lines of, "Is like uh, your information is isn't passed around or anything. It's just you're just kind of signing up through a Google Doc or something, and just we're just showing strength in numbers because that's what that's really what it's about, right? We have the legal minds in the forefront, right, representing us, and we're literally just the numbers behind them at this point, showing that you know this matters and we care and lives are being affected. I'm not going to go any further than that, but that's just the shady stuff that's happening. So we have to stand up and fight the good fight. Currently, we're sitting at a $1.1 trillion market cap. Bitcoin sitting at $24,589. ETH sitting at $16.62. XRP sitting at $0.36. Cents. Bitcoin fear, fear and greed index sitting at a 50 neutral. Uh, there's a lot, man. There, there's so much, man. Everything that I say, especially at the end of this video, is so important, okay? So I really want you to take it to heart, okay? Make sure you come to the Crypto's Key Conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Crypto is Key One and really take this to heart. Stay strong out there and be safe.